Let's talk about the spike all-in-one pressure relief valve. This is sort of a follow-on to the series I did on other options for your conical fermenter. And I'll put a link right up here to the playlist that talks about all those various items. So for me, what was really intriguing and what inspired me to go ahead and add this particular option to my fermenter is that I, like many, are getting more and more into pressure fermentation. So what was I doing before I had the all-in-one PRV? Well, I hate to admit it, but I was doing pretty much what folks say you should not do. I thought, well, it'll probably be okay, but it really probably isn't. What I did is I took my pressure manifold, simply attached a spending valve to it and tried to control my pressure that way. Now the concern is that it doesn't take much to block up these tiny little features and all of a sudden you have the opportunity for the pressure to continue to grow within your fermenter out of control. I have two links below in the description box from third parties, other folks talking about this. One, David Heath Homebrew, who I think we'd all respect, and then also Adam Mills, the head brewer for Cartridge Brewing. Adam's a commercial brewer who posts a lot of information online. And this particular link is to his February live stream where at the end he talks about not only pressure fermentation, but of all things, a hazy IPA like I have in here right now. So you may want to check those out. So as you can see right now, I'm holding this uh, fermenter at 10 PSI. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here, rewind, and show you how I got to this point and discuss some of the features that I took advantage of while brewing and fermenting this beer. Here we go. Okay, so you received your pressure relief valve all in one setup and it's time to put it together. And that's a really simple thing because really, you've got just the main housing unit, the pressure gauge, and the gas post. For the gauge and the gas post, just put a little Teflon tape on them, screw them in, and you're good to go. Wrench size is needed, 11 16 on that gas post, a 9 16 on the pressure gauge. As you look at the unit, you'll see that in addition to the uh, pressure maintenance point of view, you've also got this little bleeder port here. And what this is used for is if you need to drain your uh, liquid that you have in the reservoir up here, you just remove this plastic cap and it'll come right out. I usually just put a little cup or something underneath to catch it. Some folks will run a tube down to a bucket or something like that, but there's really not that much in the reservoir, so it's really no big deal. As far as adjusting the pressure that you want to set, very simple. It's this, this control knob right here. Close it all the way down and you're set for 15 PSI. Loosen it out and you can adjust it to whatever level you want to look at. It is kind of nice because the thread's pretty fine on this. And so you can turn a lot to make a little bit of an adjustment. So it's very easy to get precisely where you want to be. If you have the need for a manual relief of the pressure, you have just a plunger here to push down on. Instead of that ring on the top of a keg or the older PRVs where you got to stick your finger in and pull it out, this is really simple. A quick push down and you're done. The footnote on that though is avoid doing that while you have liquid inside the reservoir here. Otherwise, psh, there it goes all over the place. And apart from that, you're pretty well set. What I did on this given brew day, I had this situated on top of my fermenter. I brewed a New England IPA. So for the first couple days, I had no pressure on whatsoever. So in that case, it was just bubbling away, much as it would if you had a blow off tube. So here we, so like here we are during an active fermentation. I basically have the pressure relief valve opened all the way so that the CO2 is just venting as the fermentation occurs. Once I got through the first few days of fermentation, I started cranking down to the pressure because I wanted to get about 10 pounds on it. I let it naturally build up the pressure. Could have actually done it through the gas input, but I figured it's outgassing so much CO2 anyway, I'd let it naturally get to that point. Fine tuned it to where I wanted it to be, 
and let the, the fermentation continue for the balance under pressure, hence doing a natural carbonation to the beer as well. So there you have it. In a nutshell, that's what we've got. As I alluded to in the beginning of this video, as I'm becoming more serious about pressure fermentation, I really wanted to have the right piece of gear to safely do that operation. And with this particular unit, I think I'm there. So that's it. So I'm glad I picked this up. I'll provide more updates as time goes by with other things I experience with it. But so far, so good. It does exactly what you expect it to do. Pretty self-explanatory and very easy to use. Once again, Spike, thanks so much for all you watching. We'll catch up with you again next time. Take care. Now.